Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a thriller mystery film, Diabolique. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with Maya waking up in the middle of a rainy night. Sleeping soundly beside her on the bed is her husband. They live in an apartment on the upper floors of the All Boys Academy, where the husband works as a headmaster. Maya gets up and walks to the adjoining bathroom and removes her nightgown so she can take a bath. In the room opposite Maya's apartment, one of the young male students is peeping at her in the bathroom. Suddenly, Maya clutches her chest and collapses. She manages to utter her husband's name before she loses consciousness. The headmaster wakes up and sees his wife on the floor. The boy is alarmed by what he saw. He runs from his building up the stairs to Maya's apartment, so he can help her. On the way, he encounters Nicole, one of the teachers in the academy. Together, they knock on the door to check on Maya. Nicole enters the room first and sees the headmaster standing over Maya's motionless body. She kneels down and feels that the woman is still breathing. Not long after, Maya awakens, and Nicole gives her her medicine. A week later, the school is abuzz with the flurry of activities being done for the video shoot for the Academy's advertisement. Maya walks into the classroom after Nicole dismisses her students, and she notices that Nicole is wearing a pair of sunglasses. Nicole removes them and shows her the black eye she's sporting courtesy of the headmaster. Actually, Nicole is the headmaster's mistress, and Maya knows this. In fact, the two women have bonded over their shared experience of abuse under the headmaster, and they are planning something against him. Nicole opens her purse and shows her the prescription drug she stole from the wife of a faculty member. During lunchtime, the faculty eats with the students in the dining hall. However, the students are not eating their lunch because the food is inedible. The headmaster is angry that they won't eat and takes it out on Maya, who is sitting beside him at the table. He orders her to eat her food and swallow everything, thoroughly humiliating his wife in front of their colleagues. Nicole helps Maya out by deliberately dumping salt on her plate and pretending it was an accident, so Maya won't have to be forced to eat her food anymore. Maya then leaves the dining hall in tears. Later, the headmaster finds his wife alone in a room and tries to make her feel that it's her fault for making him be controlling. The two then head to a hormone game, but later on he also sleeps with the mistress Nicole. The next morning, Maya leaves the sleeping headmaster behind to meet up with Nicole for their secret plan. The two women drive to Nicole's nearby house in the city. Her deceased mother had owned the house and leased parts of it to an elderly couple. Their alibi is that they're staying in the house for a girl's weekend. Later that day, Maya calls the headmaster and informs him that he wants a divorce. She also tells him that she's staying in Nicole's house and he can come to her there later that night so they can finalize the papers. After, Nicole mixes the prescription pills she stole with a bottle of liquor. Maya is softly crying on her bed, racked with guilt about what they are about to do. Nicole dishes out some tough love on her, insisting that the headmaster is an abusive person, and if they don't get rid of him, they will never be free. The headmaster comes to the house, and Nicole goes to visit the neighbors, so she can distract them. Maya pours the headmaster a glass of the drug liquor and spends the time talking about the divorce and how she can get the school in the separation, because she had inherited it before they got married. The headmaster pours himself a second glass and starts to get woozy and becomes physical with Maya, choking her and insisting that she really doesn't want a divorce. During the altercation, he knocks down the ice bowl. Meanwhile, Nicole is watching TV with the neighbors. They hear the crashing sounds from the other part of the house, and the old lady gets alarmed. But Nicole just turns the TV up to distract them. The headmaster is still being physically violent with Maya. Fortunately, the drink and the pills take hold, and he starts to get dizzy. Eventually, he loses consciousness. A while later, Nicole returns and orders Maya to turn the radio up, so the neighbors won't hear any more noise. They drag the headmaster's body to the bathtub and attempt to drown him. However, the headmaster wakes up and struggles with them. The two women push him down into the tub, and Nicole tells Maya to get the water bottle from the kitchen. The headmaster finally stops fighting, and the water bottle is used to weigh his body down in the water. Nicole covers the tub with a shower curtain before leaving the bathroom. The two women settle in for the night. Maya is in shock and doesn't speak much, while Nicole is her usual cool self. Morning comes, and they put the headmaster's body inside a trunk. They struggle to haul it from the house to Nicole's car, so the old neighbor volunteers to help them. Nicole and Maya hightail it out of the house, and they drive to where the headmaster parked his car. They then separate, with Maya driving Nicole's car and Nicole driving the headmaster's car. However, they encounter a pileup on the highway, and the headmaster's car gets a flat tire. Nicole gets stuck on the highway, and Maya offers to give her a lift, 
but that would be too suspicious, since state troopers are there. So Maya goes on ahead, and they meet up at the academy later that night. They haul the trunk to the campus pool, and dump the headmaster's body there. With their plan successfully accomplished, the two women now wait for the body to surface after a couple of days. But several days pass, and his body still hasn't surfaced. Maya gets nervous, but Nicole remains unfazed. The two women eat lunch with the other faculty members, who are wondering where the headmaster is. Maya also reveals that the meal plan has now been changed, a surprising move since the faculty members know the headmaster decides everything. Afterward, Maya goes to the church to light candles, and Nicole follows her there. She asks Nicole why she chose to help her kill the headmaster when she could have just left him. Nicole slyly answers that she was underestimated by the headmaster, and she couldn't let that pass. Tired of waiting for the body to surface, Nicole drops her keys into the pool and asks one of her students to retrieve them for her. But he doesn't find anything, except a lighter that belongs to the headmaster. Curious, Nicole orders the custodian to drain the pool, but the body is nowhere to be found. Maya is full on panicking now. What's more, she notices the headmaster's freshly dry clean suit hanging on Nicole's bathroom door. With it is a roll of film and a key to a motel room. Nicole drops off the roll to shop to have it printed. Then they proceed to the motel room. They find a Latina maid there, who says that she hasn't seen the headmaster. The pictures come out and turn out to be shots of the two women hauling the trunk out of Nicole's house, followed by several pictures of the headmaster. The message is clear, someone knows what they've done and is taunting them with their secret. Back in her room, Nicole tosses Maya a wad of cash and explains that the headmaster had stolen money from the school and was supposed to split it with Nicole. But the headmaster lied to her and said that the money was stolen from him. Nicole felt betrayed by someone she had considered to be her partner, and so that was one of the reasons why she killed the headmaster. Maya is furious that Nicole killed the headmaster for money, and she threatens to go to the police and confess everything. Nicole says that the police will be more inclined to go after Maya because she's the wife. She then apologizes for not telling Maya about the money. The next morning, Maya finds a newspaper under her front door. The headline announces that a body of a man matching the headmaster's description had washed up 20 miles from the academy. Maya convinces herself that it's the headmaster and rushes off to the police station. She enters the station and passes by Shirley, a retired cop who is now working as a private investigator. The policeman on duty allows her to view the body, but it's not the headmaster, much to her surprise. Shirley looks at Maya with fascination. Later on, Maya sees Shirley again in a diner and sits down at her table. Shirley introduces herself and offers her investigative services. At first, Maya rejects her, but Shirley basically pleads with her to accept her offer because she's bored and wants a juicy case. Maya eventually gives in and drives with Shirley back to the academy. She meets Nicole who takes over the interview and answers the questions for Maya. Shirley finds this suspicious and gets Maya alone so they could talk. A young woman visits the school and demands to see the headmaster. She tells Maya and Nicole that she's the headmaster's girlfriend, and he had impregnated her. He promised he'll send her money for an abortion. Nicole gives her the money, and the woman leaves. Later that day, Maya screams inside her bathroom, when she discovers that someone has hung the shower curtain, which they used to wrap the headmaster's dead body on her window. She meets with Shirley afterward, and the investigator questions her about the headmaster's car, which she found to be involved in the highway pilot last Sunday. Shirley surmises that the headmaster went to Nicole's house to see Maya. Maya denies this and leaves. Shirley then talks with Nicole and reveals that she knows that she is the headmaster's lover. Nicole scoffs and tells Shirley that their affair is common knowledge and even Maya knows about it. The next day, Shirley sneaks into Nicole's house and sifts through her things. She finds the liquor bottle they used in the trash and smells it. She also goes to the bathroom and sees one of the headmaster's cuff links in the tub. Back in the academy, the video shoot for the promotional advertisement is underway. One of the videographers catches a glimpse of the headmaster in one of the second floor windows. This freaks Maya out, and she starts fasting and praying in atonement for their sins. Meanwhile, Nicole discovers that the money is now gone, and she sees Maya talking with a priest. Later that night, Nicole notices that Maya's heart medicine is not in her cabinet, so she says that she'll go to the pharmacy to get some. But Maya suddenly says that she wants Nicole to go away because she's sick of her. Nicole fires back, saying that she gave the money to the priest to assuage her guilt, and that does not make her a good person. Nicole then storms out and drives away. But shortly after, she sees the money in her bag and realizes that Maya is selflessly letting her go because of their friendship. This touches Nicole and makes her decide to go back to the school. 
So Mikol decides to turn the car around and go back. Shirley visits the academy that night and goes to the basement to investigate. Someone then attacks her. In her room, Maya is drawing a bath, but hears a noise. She sees a computer writing a message, saying that the headmaster is waiting for her over and over again. A recording of the two women drowning the headmaster also begins to play. She returns to her bathroom and begins to have trouble breathing. Suddenly, she sees the headmaster with white pupils emerging from her bathtub. Maya has a heart attack and collapses. The headmaster removes the contact lenses from his eyes and steps out of the tub. Nicole enters the room and badgers him for not calling her before making a move. It turns out that the two of them planned the whole thing to scare Maya into having a heart attack. The headmaster pretended to drown and breathe air in through a hose while Maya thought he was dead. Nicole kneels down and sees that Maya is still alive. She covers up for her and tells the headmaster that she is dead, for she's already changed her heart to help Maya now instead of the headmaster. However, he soon discovers that Nicole is lying and chokes both women. Maya manages to break free and runs down the stairs. The headmaster chases her to the pool where he dunks her head in and tries to drown her. Nicole catches up to them and buries a garden rake in the headmaster's head, and he falls to the water. She resuscitates Maya, but the headmaster drags her to the pool too and starts drowning her. Maya wakes up just in time and enters the pool to help Nicole drown the headmaster for real this time. The two women leave the headmaster's body in the water, and they climb out of the pool. Suddenly, Shirley appears and punches Maya in the face. She then explains that the black eye would help support his self-defense claim. Nicole apologizes to Maya for her part in the headmaster's plan, but Maya just sadly looks at her and bids her goodbye. Maya walks away, and the movie ends with Shirley smoking a cigarette as she watches the headmaster's dead body sink. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.